ってるんですけど。Hey, hey, <laughs> it's episode、yeah. 47. 47? Yep. Of Alex. That's a lot. It is a lot of damn episodes of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Just joining us.、Yeah. That's Jim. I'm Jim. And that's What, I'm, I'm pointing the right way. This, will, this is how it'll post.、There. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? <laughs>、right. uh, that's, that's Jim. Yeah. That. And that's Alex. Come on. <laughs> And it's daytime. It is. We're recording on a Sunday at 10 a.m. in Los Angeles and at 1 p.m. in New York. Very special daytime episode. Yeah. <laughs> This is、uh, so we're eligible for a, a daytime Emmy. Exactly. And we're, so we're going to. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna air our grievances the way the ladies do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> On the view and stuff. Man, that, have you ever watched any of those shows? I used to, and then、uh, it was too stressful because、uh, it felt like everybody was wrong. Yeah. So I couldn't pick a side. I'm like, oh, I agree with you, but you're doing it wrong. And that other person's just crazy. Yep. It's stressful. The thing that they do on that show that demonstrates that it demonstrates that not everybody needs to be heard. That's、yeah. what the show is really good at showing you. <laughs> yeah. You'll have like, hey, this is the conservative voice. And you're like, well, I guess that's who that is, but we don't need to hear from her on this topic because they're just wrong. Yeah. Did you see this morning?、Um, there was a quote from John Stockton, formerly of the Utah Jazz, and all that. I was going to bring it up. Yeah.、Oh. I don't remember the exact. I, he said something like 150 professional athletes have died from the vaccine. Yup. Like drop dead on the field and on the pitch, et cetera. Yup. And he, he so, couldn't tell you who they are either. No, he doesn't know any professional athletes. How would he know? That's.、Uh, that was... And you know, they, when they get to that level, I, I, I have to, like, it, does he know that's crazy? Does he think that's true? He must think it's true. It's, it's so weird because it. It makes you realize how there are a couple versions of crazy. Like there's,、yeah. there's the crazy where you believe something so outside of the norms of reasonable, but that that's a crazy belief, but that you yourself aren't really crazy in a clinical sense. I guess. You hold a view that's absurd. And then there's a view that's so absurd that you're like, no, something's broken. Something's、yeah. broken in your little head. And I, and t h i s t h i n g to check. Yeah. This feels like one of those. This feels like something you could Google. Well, this feels like one of those. He's really crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So the question then is that, was he always crazy and just looked pretty normal? Or did he go crazy from misinformation in the last like five years? He might. So sometimes、uh, older dudes break at some point. Yeah.、So、older I, athletes, especially. Yeah. I wonder if it was that. Although, what a weird, not from basketball usually. <laughs> not usually like a point guard. Yeah. You're not getting whacked in the noodle very often. So I n o w Seem like that's what should happen. I guess you're around dummies a lot, but who's not? Yeah. So, I mean, is college, <laughs> he went to what, Gonzaga, right?、Uh, I, I don't know, but that sounds good. And、uh, they're telling him, yeah, you can't you can Google it. You can't come to games until you start wearing a mask. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, that was part of it because he's just. But then that's the other part of it is like, so you don't believe in the vaccine, but why 
why does that go hand in hand that you don't believe in the vaccine or the masks? Because shouldn't it be, I don't believe in the vaccine, so I'm just going to wear my mask until we're through this. Then I could at least that, but it's always like, I also don't believe in fabric. And I think that uh, <laughs> surgeons have been lying to me this whole time. Right. It has to be everything. Yeah. It has and, to be a complete denial of everything. And, and then, of course, he would go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, so as you ask the question, is he crazy? Then are people who believe in a flat earth crazy? And, and in a certain way, they're not in a certain, in the, you know, they're functional. Sure. So they're not crazy in that sense. Like, I had a nephew, um, Charles, and Charles is a very lovely man. But Charles went crazy. And by crazy, I mean he got locked up. Yeah. And um, every now and then. Huh? Chemically, like clinically and chemically, not well. Yes. He couldn't function in the outside world. And they got him on medicine. And the medicine would make him a little better. But like a lot of people, he would like, oh, great. I'm a little better. I don't need the medicine anymore. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. yeah. I used to do that with uh, nicotine patches. <laughs> and then you think, well, you wouldn't do that with chemo. You wouldn't go, oh, I'm a little bit better. I'm going to stop the chemo altogether. You, oh, I feel like some people probably do. Yeah, they probably do. Yeah. But yeah, the, I guess the question is like, how gullible is crazy? Yeah. How gullible can do you get to be before somebody goes, nope, that's crazy instead of gullible. Yeah. And if you tuned into this for a Billy Joel discussion, this <laughs> all ties back. <laughs> We're going to tie it up in a neat bow at the end, like yeah. every uh, Seinfeld episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the other thing is you talk about athletes being dummies, and some of them are. Some of them are, are strangely brilliant, of course. Sure. Because they all went to college and some of them got real degrees and most of them didn't. But um, right. it's it there. It's definitely a thing where a dude wants to think he's in on something. Yes, it's a shortcut to being smart. Yeah. And like, I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm smart. Yeah. And deny all the information that proves that I'm not, I guess. And and you watch the people or and listen and read where people were like, well, I did my own research and you're, no, you didn't. No, research. you listen to a podcast, Yeah, research. which is fine. You should listen to podcasts. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't. Um, research has, is research itself is a thing. <sighs> yeah, it's yeah. a whole process. Now to talk about this. Now, to talk about Billy Joel, first, I'd like to talk about Paul McCartney. Oh. You know, Paul McCartney recorded this song called Let It Be. Do you remember that song? Yep. And he and there's a classic video of Let It Be uh, where he's sitting on the piano and it's just him. It's a very stripped down thing. And I believe on that song, there's very little of the other Beatles playing instruments. It's a very simple song in that regard. Although the yeah, harmonies, right. of course, are beautiful. So the, the video is just Paul's face. Now, if you go watch the video that was apparently shot for this, that they recently posted on Billy Joel's channel on YouTube, everybody, yeah. of everybody Loves You Now, it is exactly that video. And he's oh, trying to... And it's so funny how hard he tried to grow the right beard. <laughs> it's, wow. It's really funny. And I, I'm sure at the time he didn't think this is what he was doing. Yeah. But he's just being Paul McCartney. He just, <laughs> he just wishes he was Paul McCartney in this video. And who among us doesn't kind of wish we were Paul McCartney? It, it, not that's not a bad life to have but it's really funny to watch him he's on the piano now it's a much jauntier song and he's up on the mic just about the same distance <laughs> <laughs> i 
I think that's, you know, it's the big part of why we like Billy Joel, I think, is that he doesn't feel like he's the rock star. Yep. <laughs> like he's a, like a, we always say it, he's like a fan who got up on stage. Yeah, absolutely. He's so excited to be there. Yep. And it's like, well, no, I, I want to be like that guy. I'm like, no, there are people, you're, you're there now. Yeah. You made it. You're the guy now. <laughs> the guy now. It's really um, funny, too, because his beard's a little patchy. It's <laughs> like, because Paul McCartney, when he had the beard, he nailed it. Yeah. He just absolutely nailed it. And this, oh, this poor kid from Long Island did not nail it. <laughs> Oh Lord. And then the first thing and then the first thing that strikes me about the song is man, a hell of a piano. Hell of a piano, very uh, for early. This is early in his oeuvre. Yeah. When uh, the piano was a lot more tankly and melodic most of the time. Yeah. And this is uh, really is some rock and roll uh chugging style. Yeah. Piano. You're like, oh, this is um it's also like mean. Yeah. So really mean, <laughs> which is out of character at that point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it feels like an early version of what his stuff would become. Yeah. Which it's is like uh, yelling at ladies who don't like him <laughs> and yelling at dudes who are mean to ladies. <laughs> this is probably in the first category. Just his voice is in uh, fine fettle. Is that is that right? Oh yeah, fettle? I think that's right. Okay, yeah, because his voice is really good. They're rolling on uh, fine fettle. Fine fettle. His voice is in fine fettle. We love it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I said it, and then I was like, "Is that a thing people say?" I'm not sure. I think it's a thing people said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so some time ago. Um, yeah, but I, it's great. I but yes. That. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I would say I do that a lot. And particularly we'll do that a lot with people I know who are not from here, because I have a lot of friends who are like from Mexico or Puerto Rico or whatever. And inevitably there'll be a conversation where they'll go, What what's that? What did you just say? And I'll have to go, <laughs> Oh, so that's a thing we would say, and I'd explain it, and then my friend Amori, I'll explain it, and he'll still be kind of perplexed. and goes, oh, yeah, but why do they say that? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, you don't want to get into the whole thing. Yeah. I, I was playing poker with my friend Lloyd, who is Scottish, um, the other night, and he um, made some play in the game and won and said, not tonight, Josephine. And I was like, you have to use real phrases. That's you can't just make up phrases. So then he Googled it and showed me his phone. And it is a real phrase and has something to do with Napoleon and his wife. Well. And an old joke. Wow. Where the punchline was not tonight, Josephine. And is that something they say in Scotland, I presume? I presume or it may very well just be something they say here and I didn't catch it. Okay, yeah, because I I'm not I'm unfamiliar with that. Now yeah. you say always he, happy to learn a new one. Yeah. How how from Scotland is he? Like that's where he grew up? <laughs> He's very from Scotland. Yeah. Right, that's where cool. he grew up, born and raised. Nice. Uh, in Glasgow. How thick and is his accent? The, the thickest. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. It takes he's a while. Also, he's also Jewish. So there's like Scottish bravado, but it's very tempered. <laughs> in a very hilarious way that's so great I, yeah. I told you mary joe last night what mary joe last night watched another episode of love island because she ah. watched that show a lot and uh you know it's just aussies and brits fucking that's what that show is that's all is. <laughs> what's not to love <laughs> right but, <laughs> it's funny you watch the first couple episodes and there's always somebody on the show that you're like I don't know what language they're speaking. And then you listen to them for a little while and you go, oh, it's English. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with English, but that's English. It's fascinating to learn how many ways there are to speak English. 
Yeah. And then you start thinking, oh, I'll bet the same is true of Spanish or Italian. Yeah. And then you get really daunted about learning another language. Yeah, you decide not every to. Every language is like eight languages. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess English is one of the worst, but still, they're all like that a little bit. Yeah, I know Italian's really bad. Yeah. Oh, really? Just people from Naples can't understand people from Verona. Oh, and wow. I'm like, it's like 300 miles apart. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, you know what? I just read an article about that very topic. And yeah. It was about uh, the sort of, I guess, pigeon Italian that a lot of uh, uh -huh. Italian Americans speak who don't actually speak Italian anyway. I think it was about <laughs> that. That is actually a New Jersey thing specifically. Yes. Like, the, like it like gabagool and nonsense like that then that, that, right. and it was about and then it's and then the person who knew what they were talking about who wrote the article talked about how because Italy so many there were so many different influences as far as people coming from different places that jacked up the language because of that because right. they weren't harm it wasn't uh not harmonious that's not the word What's the word I'm thinking of? I don't know. Monolithic? Sure. Monolithic. That's right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's exactly the word. You don't patronize me. <laughs> it was, it's that word that I would never be able to pronounce. H-E-G. Uh, oh, uh, hegemony. Is that it? Hegemonous? Heterogeneous? Erogenous. That's what I meant. Erogenous. Erogenous. Yeah, it's very erroneous. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind, when you go to a podcast, this is the kind of science you can expect. Yeah. This is why John Stockton is crazy, because he went to some show like this. Yep, and he was like, I guess these guys are right. Yep, he was like, you know, a bunch of athletes have dropped dead, and I guess this is Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> they That's don't give podcasts to just anyone. Now, by the way, John Stockton probably always was a little bit nuts because Carl Malone was always a little bit nuts and they and they seem to be the perfect team. They work really well together. <laughs> really in sync. Yep. But yep. And John Stockton was a notorious secret prick in the good way as far as being a basketball player. Sure. And it is a shame, of course, because he was he was secretly. And I guess it wasn't a big secret to NBA players, but to people outside of the game knew he was the dirtiest player. Mm. He was the guy who would kick out his foot and hope that you tripped. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Do well, all there you go then. Yeah. And hey, maybe that's what happened to them, John Stockton. Maybe they got kicked. <laughs> <laughs> they all died of tripping. Yeah. How, by the way, I haven't seen any of those clips on any of the sports shows of guys just dropping dead. And you'd have seen one of those clips. You would think it would make Sports Center. That's what I'm saying. Barkley would have had something funny to say about it. <laughs> yeah. It could be a whole blooper show. Yeah. <laughs> That's just funny. having strokes. Yeah. Funny music underneath it. Yep. <laughs> yeah um snl um, by the way your old job did a pretty good sketch where the entire team was replaced because of covid it was very funny oh great yeah it was, last, not last night no no oh. no it was a good version of 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 that oh, yes 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 yeah of the, of the nba thing yeah and yeah. uh and i i like all their nba impressions is <laughs> really they're not great but they're they're not good but they're great yeah, I think that yeah. Charles Barkley is great, and every other yeah. one is okay. It's fine, yeah. And they're what the what the new kid did, Yao Ming. The, oh the, yeah, <laughs> yes. And, and it's a great was, Yao. Yep, and it was just him being tall. That was pretty much seems to be mostly what the joke is. Tall oh, and and real boring. Yep. Just so, great. Yeah, and that's about right. Although in real life, Yao Ming was uh, could could hold a grudge, in in a good way. He went he taught Shaq a lesson in the game because Shaq would made some Asian joke when Yao Ming first came into the league, 
And then it's just Shaq being Shaq, but Yao Ming saw it and went, hmm, okay. And then the next time they played, Yao Ming was on fire. It was great. <laughs> okay. It was him saying, hey, kind of maybe uh, don't do the racist horse shit, Shaq. Nice. And Shaq went on to say that he thought Yao Ming was the best center and could have been the best if his, you know, ankle didn't break or whatever happens. It's whatever happens to those spindly fellows. Yeah, which he hit. That's what it had. He 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 broke. His body broke. Yeah. All it's right. Not, I made it for that. All right. So everybody loves you now. All right. Does that conclude business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off of Cold Spring Harbor from 1971, as Alex said. The studio album. Yeah. This is an early tune. I mean, the earliest, right? Yeah. The earliest uh, solo studio album after he got out of his weird bands from high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Why, why don't you start us out? And, and again, uh, listen to the song. The, the piano is incredible. It's incredible music. It just really, really it. yeah. It's uh, his first like rock and roll song, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. And it occurs to me when you said uh, that was it's now 50 years ago. Yeah, came out 50. Jesus Christ! All right, I'll start. All right, baby, <laughs> baby is a great start to any rock and roll song. Yep. That's how you know it's like a uh, rock and roll code. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, all the lights are turned on you. Now you're in the center of the stage. Everything revolves on what you do. Ah, you are in your prime. You've come of age. He already seems uh, dripping with sarcasm. Yeah, that's, yeah. This is not a, these are not compliments. It's not, none of them are like, unacceptable things to say but somehow when they start stacking up yeah you know it's like if you walked into somebody's house and went oh you got a nice sofa here you got a beautiful wife bars of gold laying on the counter right there you got a friendly dog and you'd be like what are you getting at yeah and you for sure deserve it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i do like just start with baby yeah that's probably where it all starts to go sideways <laughs> right from the beginning yep yeah because yeah, he ain't with this lady no and if you call a lady baby and you ain't with her you're out to make trouble and i will say for sure that if you anytime you say oh it all revolves around you that's never <laughs> that's never, never nice yeah. And uh, is how literal is the stage that she's on? Do you think it's literally on stage or do you think she's just the center of attention in some situation and center, he doesn't like that? Center of attention. She's some kind of big shot. <laughs> <laughs> he does not like that. Yeah. They really got a problem with big shots. A, a theme that will arrive later too is his yeah. feeling on big shots. <laughs> yeah. I forget which song, but yeah. <laughs> Everything uh, goes on what you do. Ah, you are in your prime. You've come of age. That's pretty great, actually. Um, you're in your prime, yeah. you've come of age. And you're right, because some of these could be nice. And like, I mean, if I'm that lady, I'm killing it. Yeah. Not, I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah. And uh, things are going great for me. <laughs> but that guy in the corner, Seems really pissy about it. <laughs> yeah. And I could also see that in the, you could think of the, a little, all the sarcasm and then, ah, you're in your prime could be just a brief moment of not sarcasm, but just kind of bitter, bitter acknowledgement of a truth. Yes. You know, like, like if you came into the house and go, no, this is, it's a very nice house. <laughs> right i know it sounded like i was going to be mean and, uh, and i'm still kind of mad but <laughs> i did <laughs> i really like the ah uh, me too yeah because you don't if you listen to you don't need the syllable in the song 
it's just like a, yeah, it is sort of a surrender. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm just being a dick. You're in your prime. <laughs> yeah. This is, this, I'm going to complain a lot, but even I know this is mostly my fault. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I should read the couplet that follows because it's yeah. sort of part of the same thought. You're in your prime, you've come of age, and you can always have your way somehow, but everybody loves you now. That should be and everybody loves you now. Yeah. But I the, think. The reason it's but, so it's interesting because I think, I think so, and everybody loves you now, but everybody loves you now is I think projection because I think it's him going, oh, they shouldn't, they shouldn't. Uh, that or it's nobody loves me now. Oh, yeah. I think this is, <laughs> it's very incel what's yeah. happening here. Yeah. And you know, we've been there uh, when there's a hot lady at a party and everybody likes her and you're just getting mad for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, the John um I can't remember his name now John uh, um, Harding we we knew him in trial in fancy ketchup Mike Harding might... Michael Hardigan oh I don't think I know that person oh anyway uh, I, I remember apparently I don't either <laughs> <laughs> but great dude. And he, uh, I guess him and Graham were reminiscing about our days at Fancy Ketchup. And he said, man, we sure did have the white guy perspective. <laughs> because <laughs> they were looking at old videos we had made. And, you know, a lot of funny stuff. They're just, a lot of stuff stands up. It's still funny. And then a lot of stuff is like, oh, you guys are mad about something. <laughs> you guys are yeah. just mad. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, better better to form an improv group or a sketch group than you know a militia i guess absolutely <laughs> there's, a, there's a thin line it really is man and there's a lot of people who'd rather go to your militia meeting than your stupid improv show but <laughs> more people to go i think there's a point where uh the only difference between a militia and an improv troop was like being afraid of handling guns yeah, that's true. Like you can yeah. pretend, you pretend you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, ah, if we have guns, I'll like I'll shoot my foot or something. Yeah. Let's do improv. <laughs> Although I will say any good militia is really good at yes and <laughs> nicely done. Uh, here we go. You yeah. can walk now. Here's now, for sure, he's being a dick now. <laughs> you can walk away from your mistakes. You can turn your back on what you do. Oh, man. So now, yeah. just a little smile is all it takes. That, that is a bitter little line. Yeah, you all can right. have your cake and eat it, too. Loneliness will get to you somehow, but everybody loves you now. Working my way backwards. Loneliness will get to you somehow. Seems like something that the this angry dude is hoping. Yeah, this is a, a wish his heart is making. Yeah, it's yeah. You're gonna. This is gonna bum you out. You're gonna wish that you were with the yelling guy in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, uh, he's accrediting her for so some, you know. Irresponsibility and cruelty. You could walk away from your mistakes. You could turn your back on what you do. Or is he the mistake? I don't think he's the mistake. I think he's just mad that she gets away with murder because she's hot. Yeah. Yep. Because just a little smile is all it takes. Yeah. You can have your cake and eat it too, which isn't really true because any anybody will tell you if you're going to maintain your figure, you can't eat cake. And you can't literally can't have it and eat it too yeah unless it's uh schrodinger's cake <laughs> that's great uh, oh i love a schrodinger joke i really do it's you know i love them and they're really hard to find yeah. um hard to find an audience for them yeah so that, 
Thank you for being there. Um, I think what he, it's, you could flip every sentence. It's all projection. He's basically saying, I can't walk away from my mistakes. Yep. My smile doesn't do shit for me. <laughs> I'm a little meatball from Long Island. Yeah. And it cares what mood I'm in. And I've eaten too much cake. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten my cake and had it. And loneliness got to me early. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody loved me ever. And nobody loved me ever. <laughs> nobody, it's not as good a song. It's, they're, you know, that was a little emo for the time. Yep. Uh, and then. So you couldn't be sad about yourself in songs, but you could be mad at women. <laughs> <laughs> it was the golden age of being mad at hot ladies. And I, I don't know that that's ever ended, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> oh, wow uh, th this next one which is yours comes up to a pretty good line but then i didn't even know about this next line so go ahead <laughs> this uh yeah it's this sort of a little bridge that happens yeah in the song here's ah uh, again yeah ah they all want your white body and they await your reply Ah, uh, but between you and me and the Staten Island Ferry, so do I. Well, he's given away the game. Yeah. I'm mad because I want you. Yeah. And this line is so bizarre. They all want your white body. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I don't know. An unpleasant line. <laughs> it was an unpleasant clinical assessment. It's a little dextery. Yeah. So is she? So the only thing that pops in my mind, because that's a weird thing to say, is is she dating people who are at white and bugs him? What's the point of bringing it up? I think like he was going for like alabaster, but it didn't fit. Okay. Like I think he was going for like, oh, you you know, you have beautiful white skin okay. in a non-racial context. So but he was like, oh, I only have room for one syllable, and it'll be weird if I put in hot. <laughs> yeah. So then that's not a then that's objectively just wasn't a good choice. I think it's yeah. I don't think it's a choice. I think it's a clunk. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I don't often say that. I'll try to, but I. It's jarring. It's fucking jarring. It's jarring, and it, but it does fit the like murdery vibe. Yeah, <laughs> which is then un undercut by this. Between you and me and the Staten Island Ferry. Yeah. Now they're not on the Staten Island Ferry when this is happening. I don't think so. Unless that's where he's throwing her off of. <laughs> I think this is where he's a, like a little Jewish man. Yeah. Because it does sound like, I don't know the origin of this, but it does sound like a thing you would say like, you know, between you know i think there's a common expression like between you and me and the lamppost right. right yeah and he was like well if you're from uh new york <laughs> you say between you and me and the staten island ferry yeah absolutely and it just sounds corny and older than his age yeah and uh i will say too it it's worth, and it's worth mentioning that this part of the song, the way he sings this is really pretty. That yeah. part of the song's really pretty. Yep. And, uh, again, and, fine fettle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fine fettle, but man, terrifying. Well, yeah, and it's funny too because it's so pretty that, you know, I, I don't think I ever heard that first line in this verse. Ah, they all want your white body. Oh, that was like the first thing I heard when I heard that song. I was like, oh, just felt like a shattering glass. Oh, that's funny. Because, yeah, I think at that point in the song, I'm mostly just enjoying it. 
and uh and that particular word just didn't jump out at me as drastically as it does right now looking at it yeah oh no when i first heard it i was like oh it does sound like cool lyric writing but not from that era yeah it sounds very like early 80s tech you know that sort of english techno thing that happened yeah they want your white body <laughs> like uh the english beat doing it yeah or spandau ballet yeah yeah there's no way around that not being jarring <laughs> yeah and, uh, uh, good good save with the fairy but i don't know right. I don't know. uh all the people want to know your name soon there will be lines outside your door feelings do not matter in your game yeah because nothing's going to touch you anymore which i think he's just accusing her of being loose now it seems like it yeah uh so your life is only living anyhow i like that line your life yeah. is only living anyhow implying that uh you're not really uh the no meaning you're just you're just existing yeah. you're not just trying to do anything in particular it's just going out you're going through the motions now and you get your end that you asked for earlier oh, yeah. and everybody <laughs> loves you now thank you and now this is an insulting and because this i think just brings home the the everybody <laughs> yeah because now I think the everybody, now he's implying with the everybody, if he wasn't just saying it before, he's now making it clear that what he's saying is, man, you seem to date everybody. Yeah. You're seeing all kinds of dudes, not me. I, but You know, I see that. Um, I could also see it another way, which is that she turns everybody down. Oh. When I see soon there will be lines outside your door, Feelings do not matter in your game. She doesn't mind shooting dudes down. Oh. Um, is another way to look at it. Yeah, I you know, that is a good way to look at it. And it is an angry dude who wouldn't see how right she is to do that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she walks through the world not knowing that all these guys are desperate for her. Yeah. And just shoots them down left and right because their feelings do not matter to her, which is, again, very incel -y. Yeah. Like, how dare you hurt my feelings yeah. and not let me go out with you? <laughs> right, and, and probably half the time, it's because they're not actually asking her out. They're being coy and weird because they don't know how to talk to her. Yeah, and playing out the whole scenario ahead of time in their heads. Yeah. Oh, I, I'd ask her out, and then she'd be like, no, fuck you. <laughs> I'd get all mad at her when they haven't even said hi. Yeah. <laughs> we've been there. Yeah. 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 We should stop telling people we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Well, yeah. And maybe we haven't been there this badly, but we've been there. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Yep. Look, we were young and naive. Yep. And now we're tired, so we can't do stuff like that. Yeah, no. Now our bodies hurt, and we are like, uh, yeah, well, I don't, don't need to do that because I'm tired. I'm tired. All right. Nothing's going to touch me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, life is only sleeping, anyhow. <laughs> uh, <we're, laughs> I'm lost, sorry. Uh, close your eyes when you don't want to see. Stay at home when you don't want to go. Only speak to those who will agree, John Stockton. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Close your mind when you don't want to know. You have lost your innocence somehow, but everybody loves you now. Hmm. Um, this is musically a fun part of the song too, where he sort of like is very sparing with the piano. Yeah. And if you were gonna have an audience clap, it would be during <laughs> this portion. <laughs> Although you would be bumming them out so hard. I don't know that they'd feel like clapping. <laughs> Close your eyes when you don't want to see. Stay at home when you don't want to go. Only speak to those who will agree. And close your mind when you don't want to know. It's funny because now our incel is trying to be deep. Yeah. 
Yeah. And Again, this is all stuff he definitely does. Yeah. He doesn't like it when she does it. Yeah. I she don't think he does be- with different perspectives. And she very well may not be doing it. It may very well be that he doesn't know. Yeah. Well, let's say it's somebody she's she he does has tried to talk to, and he she's like, you know, my girlfriend says that I shouldn't put put up with your horse shit when you do this. Oh, of course, you'll talk to people who agree with you. No, she <laughs> just knows what you do, and you should <laughs> do those things. You're so close-minded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that that is by the way oh my god the closed-minded thing when somebody is telling you insane stuff or whatever or when they're trying to talk you back into going to church i thought you were <laughs> open-minded and you're like yeah i was i went to church i decided i don't want it open-minded isn't trying it again no oh, that's broken-minded yeah that's not how that works and <laughs> And really, at this point, all you're doing is you're justifying how the conversation, why it's not your fault that I'm not going with you so you can keep going. That's all you're doing. Yeah. By the way, close your eyes when you don't want to see and stay at home when you don't want to go is a perfectly fine way to live. Yeah, that's true. Why would you go if you didn't want to go? Yeah. And yet we're being, he thinks uh, that means you've lost your innocence. Yeah, that's by the way, the lost your innocence maybe suggests there's a little bit of his being annoyed that she's possibly has hooked up with someone else. Yes, definitely he is. Yeah. Or the idea that she might hook up with anybody else. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's really not doing well, this fellow. Uh, Oh, man, it's funny. I didn't. Now, here here we come, to, uh, you know, name of the album is coming up. The name of the album is going to pop up, everybody. It's like that part in the book. Lean forward. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know that nothing lasts forever, and it's all been done before, but you ain't got the time to go to Cold Spring Harbor. The crowd goes wild. No more. <laughs> <laughs> Now, nothing lasts forever is him letting her know, hey, you ain't going to be pretty forever. Yeah. And and you ain't all that original. It's all been done before. So this, I mean, he, this, he might even be just saying this to himself at this point. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where you go, well, you know, you know, she's not going to be that pretty forever. And yeah, eventually not- I'll win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you're hot now. But when you're 70. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Even if you do think that, when you're 70, well, he's also going to be in his 70s. And for a 70-year-old, she's probably going to be pretty hot. He's going to think, damn it. (laughs) Is she never going to go to Cold Spring Harbor? (laughs) No. Um, It does make it seem like she used to go to Cold Spring Harbor, and he knows that. Yeah. Um. Feel like I don't know much about Cold Spring Harbor, but I'm guessing it's a mid-level <laughs> summer weekend destination yeah. for Long Islanders. Maybe yeah. there's a little boardwalk or something. Yeah. And now she goes. Now she goes to like the Hamptons or something with fancy boys. I was gonna say it's exactly that. It's like you don't go. You now you're out with your fancy, and he's mad at her because he's mad at her because now she goes places that are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now she's going to good restaurants and he can't. Yep. <laughs> he's really mad at his life. Yeah. She's a uh, a target. Yeah. Oh, this poor man. This poor I man. hope he had some awareness when he was writing this song, like, oh, I'm gonna write a song from the point of view of one of those incel types. Yeah. And it wasn't just writing <laughs> this thing like this is exactly how I feel. Well, here's a question. Would that have even been understood? I think. Oh, I like to think so. Because like now we now we've pinpointed what that group is. You know, <laughs> that, that group is that we understand what complete numbnuts they are. The my favorite version is the 
this guy posted this video I happened to see where he's so mad at this female gamer. Those are some of the worst, by the way. Oh, yes. In the gaming community. Yeah. And he what he was mad about most was literally that she was good looking and playing games. <laughs> like, that's our thing. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. And she was, and this girl is really knowledgeable because you know it turns out women like to play different games too, and video games are a good outlet. Like my wife loves video games for some yeah. reason. Great. So much so that sometimes I'm like, okay, I will play video games with you. <laughs> <laughs> but this incel dude was like so bad and and I don't know how they don't realize when they're recording the video, hey, this is a perfect thing to make fun of. You shouldn't record this video because you are so ripe for ridicule. How do you yeah. how do you not recognize that? They only talk to other people who are that mad about the same thing. Yeah. There was the same thing. There was this black dude railing about black women and why am I going to give you this and that and that when it turns out you've had sex with other dudes? He was just mad that a woman might have had sex prior to dating him. Wow. And all these sisters online just made fun of him so much. And I was like, again, how do you record that and not realize your your comedy in the waiting? Yeah. I mean, as comedy people, thank God for that kind of uh, yeah. blind spot. Yeah, yeah. It just... And, you know, that whole, I mean, his old fashioned view doesn't make sense anymore of the like, everybody's got to be a virgin, but also then go find somebody who is and shut up. Yeah. When you're wrong to be mad, the thing is to be secretly mad. Yeah, exactly. Shut up. <laughs> and that, should be wrong? A, that should be a podcast. Advice for people who are mad for bad reasons. That's good <laughs> advice. Be secretly mad. That's such solid. The rest advice. of us are doing that. I like, did, oh, that guy has a nice car, but he's a dick. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll just, why don't I shut up about that? I vividly remember going off on something when we were having dinner and uh, fancy ketchup. And I was mad about something. And I had no business being mad. And being made fun of for months. Yeah. And kind of being okay with it because I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, people just can't admit a defeat in that arena. Yeah. It's, it's hard for sure, but you got to get there or else you uh, get to be mad forever. And, people, and that's no way to die. Yeah. <laughs> or is it? You know, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I'll... <laughs> Uh, whoever dies first to uh, quickly text the other one. Yeah, I told you my uh, my my dumb joke. It's not that dumb. I actually like the joke. Um, <laughs> you know, life is unpredictable. You could get hit by a bus tomorrow, but you can't count on it. That was the joke. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> all right. See, see how all the people gather around. Hey, isn't it a thrill to see them crawl? <laughs> oh, oh boy, buddy. Keep your eyes ahead and don't look down and lock yourself inside your sacred wall. Walls? Yeah. This is what you wanted, ain't you proud? Which he like scream sings. Yeah. Because everybody loves you now. This is, I mean, manifesto stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just good there's not a thing he says after this. <laughs> this could be played over like a gun cleaning montage. <laughs> um, isn't it a thrill to see them crawl? It really, this like song predates like school shooters. Yeah. And it sure has that vibe. Yeah, it, um, and it, if he's just talking to himself, which he probably is, that's the funny part, is he's not saying one word to this lady. Yeah, she don't know. And the entire song, she doesn't know that a potential threat is also in the building 
Yeah. Uh, but the only way this could be healthy is if this is getting it out of my system. That's the best case scenario. Best case is saying all this garbage, just right. get it out. And then once you get it out, go, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm kind of worked up. I shouldn't. This yeah. Is her fault. I'll take it out on the piano. Yeah. Like it would be amazing if there were one more lyric that was just, eh, you know what? I'm, I'm being a bit much. This ain't her fault. <laughs> Everybody loves her now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can go back through the lyrics and not find anything she did wrong. Yeah. Or even anything she did. <laughs> yeah. It's all speculation. Yeah. The, the most you know that she did is she had the temerity to be pretty. Yep. And uh, she, she, uh, she's a white had, girl. She's white. She's white. She had the, the gall to turn people down that she probably wasn't interested in. And she's too busy to go to a smelly town in Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. Things, how dare things work out for you? Yeah. I yeah. mean, based on that, I think everybody loves us now. Yeah. True. And don't you think, too, in a lot of ways, this lady seems like some kind of modern woman? <laughs> yeah, well, it's good that he changed his opinion of that kind of lady. Because in Modern Woman, he seems pretty psyched about her behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the log line I just said is the song the, for the last episode was I just said that Billy Joel talks about a modern woman, by which he means a lady with a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He caught up. He very slowly caught up to the times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I would the dip now wildly different. So modern woman. The other thing I said about that is, man, if you want to hear a song that sounds exactly like the year it came out, it because modern woman does. Unlike this, which this musically is a Billy Joel song. It is a Billy Joel rock and roll song, but an early version. Yeah. But I don't think, like, I don't think it sounds like it had to be in the 70s or it, it, you could come out with this song right now, the, this arrangement, although now the insult thing would scream at you, of course. Oh, yeah. But musically, it's, uh, it is the kind of Billy Joel song that has a sort of timeless quality to it because it's not like anything else, which is kind of neat. Yeah, no, it's his piano style. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't expect to hear anybody else's voice after that intro. And also, by the way, look at, well, look at the video. Go watch the video where he looks a little bit like Scrut, like um, <laughs> mangled Paul McCartney. <laughs> Half the reason this lady's not interested in you is that you really, this is not a good beard. You're not pulling off the beard in this one. And I, and I've seen Billy Joel with a decent beard. I think he could do it. Yeah. Yeah, he did it for a while. But this one is a little off. There's like a little bit, it's a little bit patchy. He's pretty young. How young is he at this point? He's like 22 or 23. Oh, uh, yeah. So that fir first beard sometimes doesn't come out. Oh. Mine still yeah. hasn't. This is not what I was doing at 22. Yeah. And this, this is. It's not great now, by the way. No. There's holes in it. It's still, it's charming though. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, this, yes, I'm never going to get the beard, <laughs> just never. <laughs> I'm going to get old enough where I can just stop shaving because there's nothing else to do. But, uh -huh. <laughs> but you'll look like one of those World War One vets. Yeah. He's like still alive. <laughs> I'm going to tell people I am because then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get one of those ball caps with the name of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because all the people who will care about that stolen valor will be long dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go for some, like, Civil War valor. <laughs> <laughs> Although, that's coming back, so. Yeah, true. True. Well, we, we, we did a little dry run. Yeah. I was I'm very not, excited. I'm pro-union. Pro yeah. By the way, I was very excited that they finally, somebody got sedition charges. That made me happy. 
yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. It's a thing I've been saying to people who are like, eh, they're not doing anything. I'm like, um, it's the law. It takes a long time if you want to actually get a conviction. Yep. And you got to start with uh, the henchman. Yeah. You know, a long time to roll them up. And even then, when you start with the henchman, that takes time. You can't just bring them in and yep. go, hey, here's what we think you did. Uh, we have no evidence yet because we didn't bother because that's apparently what people wanted. Yeah. They wanted them to go, hey, these are the guys on the video. Convict them. Like, okay, well, first we got a lot to find out. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of double checking. People don't like that. Nope. Take John Stockton, for example. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the double check stuff. 150 dead athletes. Oh, completely man. not reported on. <laughs> yeah. And apparently, no, no stars, apparently. Definitely nope. It was all nope. bench guys for sure. If all were. third stringers. You're like, and so maybe that's part of the COVID too. Maybe COVID only goes after, you know, guys <laughs> with bad stats. It only goes after journeyman yeah. quarterbacks. So you're safe, John Stockton. You, you made yeah, it. Yeah, Hall of Fame. You're in the, come on. You have Hall of Fame immunity. Uh, the only thing I wish for John Stockton is I wish he had not been inducted into the Hall of Fame yet and that they were inducting him this year because I'd want to hear that speech. <laughs> uh, God damn it. I'm sure we'll hear. I mean, he's Stockton ain't alone. I'm sure yeah. we'll hear a lot of crazy speeches. Oh, I hope so. I hope so because I just, I don't care too much. Like if, you know, if Jordan gave a crazy, Jordan wouldn't because he's smart. Yeah. But Carl Malone, Carl Malone probably thinks some nonsense. Oh, by, yeah, by all means. I was happy to see Aaron Rodgers say a bunch of dumb shit and then immediately lose. <laughs> it's great. I bet the entire Utah Jazz had a few bad ideas. I mean, the team is called the Utah Jazz. Yeah. That was a start. Um, is jazz even legal in Utah? <laughs> That's always been the jarring thing about it. Utah. Yeah. yeah. Well, the okay. team moved from New Orleans, right? Is that what it was? Oh. I think that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, and then they just kept the name. <laughs> yeah. Because Utah has no distinguishing characteristics. Yeah. The, the use white, white bodies. The white bodies, yeah. Well, well, everybody the loves them. The white bodies. Well, yeah. I was there. On, uh, I'm curious what's happening behind you. Oh, my goodness, yes. You know, for you, you got three horses. Yep. They look like wild horses. They are indeed wild horses. Mm hmm. And it couldn't drag you away from stuff? Um, well, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that, is that a lyric or something? <laughs> but, <laughs> from something? Not a Billy Joel song. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are definitely, uh, oh, okay, I got you. I was like, huh, I don't, I don't know. What song is that? <laughs> I think it's a song called Wild Horses. Oh, yeah, that's a great song. Is that a uh, Stone song, right? I think so. Yeah. Did I just get this wrong? Did I think that would no? <laughs> Couldn't drag you away. Oh yeah, it's, that's right. It is a Stone song and a very good one too. Yeah, yeah. I think it was an album title as well. Yeah, the Stones are the perfect group. Like if we were analyzing Stone songs, they're the perfect group because we'd alternate between brilliant song, garbage song. Oh yeah. Song, absolute crap. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant song. Should have stopped. Nothing in the middle. Yeah. Great. And if you put a, did a show where you were analyzing Paul McCartney uh, songs, I don't oh. do that. You're going to be too busy. <laughs> there are too many. There are too many. And they're long, some of them. Yeah. Jesus, Jet. Your Uncle Albert episode is going to be go on and on. Let's see, do we want to find out what my mom is texting me about? Oh, sure. 
All right, it's 38 degrees. So she's not going to play golf. Is mom a golfer? <laughs> uh, mom's a golfer. Not today, though. Too no. cold. She took two Tylenols because she has a sore throat. Enjoy the games. That's, that's reasonably friendly. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you got to read between the lines. <laughs> like, enjoy the games. Oh, yeah, now you're right. Now it's while good. you're not calling me. <laughs> so oh. wild, we got wild horses. Yeah. Horses in a field. I can't think of any horse references from any song. Well, if I, if I, and I got nervous for a second was I was like, did I accidentally pick up a picture of a horse with too much dick? But no, that's, that's just a little flat. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so wild horses. Um, and there's a thing that a wild, I'll give you a hint. Mm -hmm. There's a thing that hasn't happened if they're wild. Ah, yes. They're untamed. That's right. They're untamed. You're very close. Huh? Um, uh, good night, Saigon. That's right. And now it occurs to me that nobody says tameless horses. No, unless they're trying to rhyme it with nameless corpses. That's right. <laughs> but then you change nameless to numbered because you find out that, yes, indeed, they did put the names on the corpses. Yeah. And then you don't change tameless because you're lazy <laughs> or you have a deadline or something. Yeah, because, yeah. And we life is only living anyhow. We came in spastic. Yeah, which you can't say anymore. Oh, is that a... That's a slur now. Against? Or no, it's a slur to call someone a spaz. Okay. Because spasticity is a symptom of a neurological disorder. And oh. you're being uh, mean. Oh, I didn't know that. And... Um... I learned these things working for network television. Okay, so like in regular life, no one will even notice, probably. In that probably. Way. In like, yeah. it depends how woke your circle is. Yeah. Like in Berkeley, you might get yelled at. So, sp I think you're okay in Brooklyn. Okay, so spastic because it references spasms. Right. Yeah. So that, you're, that person's not well that you're making fun of. Okay. Sorry. So don't make fun of them, put a spoon in their mouth. Right. So I don't yeah, I've always heard wallet. Wallet, yeah. Wallet in their mouth. Yeah. Not your finger, because you, you yeah. might lose that. Yep. Were you ever at a school when somebody had a seizure? Yes. In my math class in high school, someone had a full seizure. It's very frightening. So that was super frightening. And then the next frightening thing was everybody freaked out except for the teacher who obviously knew ahead of time that this person had this condition so it was super weird how calm the teacher was because oh. i didn't make the connection at the time that like oh the teacher must have known about this condition in advance yeah um so i was like oh this teacher is cold-blooded <laughs> obviously he just was informed it was informed and it was doing their job <laughs> yeah it's freaky it's freaky yeah um i proud to say that my fellow students were nice and didn't make fun of this person and everyone seemed genuinely concerned i as as i recall that was the same at my school and this was in grade school and it was it was a it was somebody walking to class oh kind of frightening too because it was like ah get somebody who can help it was that ah no this was dead in the middle of class yeah and uh, yeah, because, you know, uh, when you joke about somebody having a seizure, and like, we would do that. We'd do seizure jokes. Uh, and it was like funny. But when you see a real one, you're like, oh, this is not funny. It's very intense and terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Your body is being a jerk. Yep. Or your brain or both. Yeah. yeah so trivia wise. Bust. <laughs> I'm fin to bust. Um, these were sent 
in, not to me, to a website. Allegedly, there are only five. There are maybe more. Uh, Billy Joel song titles that are not used in the lyrics of the song. Can see how many you can think of. Okay. Well, he never says big shot. <laughs> um, well, good night, Saigon. I don't think he says good night, Saigon. He does not say good night, Saigon. I think that that's funny that I, that happens to be a good example. Um, So I got one. Uh, wow, that's a really good question. So songs where he doesn't say. Yeah. Again, I'm not confident that this is a complete list. Yeah. Um, but I like the area. Well, I think it turns out I can get one. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, scenes from an Italian restaurant. Scenes for son of a bitch. Right. Yeah, why would you ever sing that? Yeah, that's true. Wow. Um, travel in prayer. Travel in prayer, okay. Mm -hmm. Weekend song. <laughs> Weekend song. <laughs> Just why, again, why? By the way, immediately there's three I can think of. Root beer rag. Root, of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Mexican connection and nocturne. Yeah all three of which have no lyrics and are not on this list. Yeah. So this list is bullsh. Unless, the, yeah, unless they considered that a cheat because there's no lyrics at all, but still. Still. That they count, that's. Uh, famous Last Words, which song I can't even think of. Oh, uh, it, d he never says this is the ballad of Billy the Kid, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, yes, Billy the Kid appears, but not the title. True. Okay, Ballad of Billy the Kid. Yeah. Uh, commercial for steak, as I've said. <laughs> so bad. Oh, I love that video you sent me, by the way. Which I think, um, I, as far as I could Google, that never existed. And no. it looks to be like a fun little project that somebody did with existing video in the 80s. Yeah. For their own edification. Yep, and very funny because it was exactly what we were talking about with a different song that Bill, uh, Billy Joel, I guess a lot of Billy Joel songs probably make sense as a theme song to something. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd love the inclusion of, uh, what was her name, Dinah Madoff? Yeah. Fucking great. Yeah. And James Coco. <laughs> uh, really well done. I will. Uh, so what Alex and I are talking about, since we have. Oh, yeah. It's good. <laughs> this, good what, idea. What's the song they used? Um, what is the song they used? What? It was an instrumental version of some song. Yeah. I can't remember what it was now. All right. Well, well Anyway, so what it, what it is, somebody uh, did a, a cool thing where they edited a video of a Billy Joel song, all included at the end, so you can watch it. And it's just hit the instrumental version of a Billy Joel song as if it was the theme song to a 70s era TV show like Bob Newhart or one of those shows. Yeah. And it's yeah. really good. It's, it's really good. Really good, entertaining video. I'm amazed at the things people do that are clearly can't be profitable. That are just <laughs> fun for me. That's interesting to me. I mean, well, we do this, so there you go. I mean, that's true. Some Although day. someday, yeah, <laughs> cash in on this baby. Oh yeah, my one of some of my favorites is re like. Um, there's a video for a, a trailer for the original Karate Kid but it's as a stalker movie and oh they just re-edited it with sinister oh, music, and the premise is that uh our main character is actually stalking this uh girl at the beach right and it kind of works too because 
as many people have pointed out, you know, just if you reassess his behavior, he's really not great either. Yeah. Yeah, guy, it's true. The other guy probably shouldn't be kicking him. Sure, that's true, <laughs> but... Yeah, but he didn't handle it properly. No, he's he's more or less a stalker. <laughs> down because I want to remember to put this on the episode. Every now and then I'll say, I'm going to put this video at the end, and then I end up just putting some other dumb video. So I'm going to try to remember <laughs> to do this. <laughs> Writing things down is a great way to remember. Yes. Now, have you ever done this? Because uh, I write stuff down. I have to all the time because I'll think of a joke. So, for example, I have here on napkin cave paintings because I thought of a joke about cave paintings. Sure. Um, but sometimes I'll do this. I'll write down cave paintings and later on I'll go, cave paintings? What the fuck is, the fuck is cave paintings? Yeah. The things you think you'll remember. Yep. I've started like when we go, like we were at West Elm yesterday looking at coffee tables and I was like, oh, that's a good one. I'll remember it when I get to the website. And my immediate next thought was, no, you won't, stupid. <laughs> a picture of the name of it. Yeah. Now I have to remember to look at my picture, which but, I'll probably forget, and we'll just never have a coffee table. <laughs> why did we'll we keep dropping coffee? coffee on the rug, and we won't know why. <laughs> <laughs> keep setting it up. There are posters all over the ground. <laughs> oh. That's such a funny visual. That's great. <laughs> I knew I forgot something. Right. Uh, you, have you have a song for us i you know i try to never pick one until we're recording because usually the themes will push me towards something oh okay um and you know we're talking about uh, his incel vibe yeah. in this song we did talk about modern woman where he came around to finally having some appreciation and uh, i think i want to go to one Hopefully we haven't done it, where he uh, does some self-reflection about his own behavior when he's around an attractive woman. Uh, shameless. Fantastic. And I don't think we have. We have talked about the song existing. Yes. But we haven't talked about, and we've talked about the cover of the song. Yes, which we will also probably do next week. Yep. And then, and next week we will probably also talk about, um, you know, Lou Gehrig. Huh. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I was gonna be sad, but I won't be sad. <laughs> that was the uh, that wasn't the perfect pick. I just couldn't think of the right basketball player. Anyway. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kareem. We talk about Kareem. Talk about Kareem. <laughs> and how he's maybe one of the greatest human beings period absolutely i find him so i read everything he writes yeah like his op-eds are just the best things in the world i love a thoughtful athlete is a rare gift yeah it's Fucking funny funny too how and i is it because they're athletes that when an athlete happens to be thoughtful they're the most thoughtful they knock it out of the park they really do. They have a lot of downtime. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's true. Some of them fucking abuse it and others read books. Yep. Um, I was going to say it's their competitive nature. Oh, I'm going to be thoughtful as a motherfucker. <laughs> no one's going to outthink me. <laughs> oh, certainly not in basketball. The Hall of Fame of Reasonableness. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say a couple things and then I'm going to see if you can put together what's happening. Okay. Uh, I've been drinking coffee for now an hour and 19 minutes and I'm a 55 year old man. Oh, so what do you think I have to do now? You got to poop. I got to poop. Yep. All right. Well, that seems like a good place to stop. <laughs> hey, it really and, does. and you folks at home, if you need to, you go poop.